I started with him, I was 25 years old and he was just 17. So, you know, we've both gone through different stages of life together and I think that's helped our relationship on the court. My biggest philosophy is, especially when I work with high level players, is if I have to be your motivator, I don't want to be your teacher. You know, I can't be both. And I think that's something that he's, I've never had to do with him. I've never had to say, Trey, we got to get to the gym. Like, it, a guy like this, it's like you have to get him away from the gym so he doesn't run his body into the ground. Too. Like I see Cam Reddish. Don't ever doubt me. Don't ever doubt me. <laughs> All right, so one thing I want to know is like guys like Trey are super talented and sometimes it's like you're training and you might want him to do a certain thing, but throughout that he might do the footwork his way or like he might, you know, as you're watching, you're like, oh, he didn't necessarily do that exactly how you taught it. Like how do you draw the line between, hey, I want to correct this or I want to want to let Trey kind of be Trey? Well, I think a lot of it is everyone's bodies are different and just because something may be comfortable like a lot of it is just from watching film of other players that we're trying to add right now in terms of like mid-range but the way Trey moves may be totally different from the way in certain scenarios the way Kyrie moves or Chris Paul moves so for me it's more about as long as it's off on time and it's realistic in terms of game speed and it's selling what we want to sell it doesn't matter to me because it's like you know, you can sit there and nitpick, but as long as he's comfortable and he's going to get it off in games, that's really all that matters to me. Everything you did was like drill, live situation. Is that consistent through, through all your players, or is that something with Trey just kind of being a gamer that you feel like he learns best when he's kind of put in a situation where he has to react and has to score a certain way? Well, again, I, I think Trey is very much a situational type player to where what I mean by that is when you put him in spots and he can start seeing it and reading and reacting, that's when he's kind of at his best because his instincts are just off the charts. Um, you know, how I try to approach his development is, all right, let's focus on the, the small parts of what we're trying to accomplish and then let's put him against a live defender and see if he still has those same reads or what he's uncomfortable with because let's be honest, anyone can do exactly what you ask when there's no defense out there, but then when defense starts coming and pressure starts being applied, that's when players really start having to figure out what works best for them. So then I can kind of adjust and go from there. You know, he's a guy who it's like, he can shoot from 35 feet. He's one of the quickest players in the league. But the whole time you guys are talking about mid-range, you're talking about his left-hand floater, talking about, hey, this can be a little bit better. Like, where do you think all-star starter, like, where do you think his kind of ceiling is and is he even close to it? Um, well, when you talk about a guy that averages 30 and 9, it's hard to say he's not anywhere close to his ceiling. But I think for Trey, he's always kind of overperformed what people have expected him to. And he's a guy that wants to be one of the all-time greats. And he knows to do that, he's got to keep improving. Right? Some of it just comes with age and maturity and experience. Um, but other things that are in our control, we have to make sure we're doing everything we can to kind of close that gap to you know, get him from where he is now to now leading a team that can make the playoffs or potentially win a championship. So I think for Trey, it's something that makes him great and probably what makes what I've seen with a lot of great players is they're always looking for, okay, what can I do now? You know, what's next for me? And I think that's something that he's always embodied. <clears throat> His shooting, you know, he, he'll make five in a row. Even if he misses three in a row, it never feels like he's ever searching for necessarily an answer sometimes. Like you'll be like, hey, you know, get your follow through up or leave your left hand up, stick your landing, et cetera. Those teaching points kind of come from you. It seems as if his confidence, it's probably why he's a great shooter, is always like the next one is going in. Like where do you think that that matters on the scale of him being one of the best shooters in the league? I, I think one of the biggest parts, there's two main parts to me of shooting. Once you get the mechanics, decently how you want to, because everyone sits there and says, okay, we got to do this perfect or this perfect, but the realistic part of it is is it comes down to how many reps you're putting in and how confident you are how confident you are with those reps that you've done um, so for him and it, I, I'm sure some people notice like I'm not trying to over teach or over correct you know because a, a guy like Trey he's gonna figure it out so sometimes I need to give him that space to be in his own head and figure out what he did wrong rather than me always try to give him an answer you know so I, I think the balance what we've what we've become very good at as a team because you know when Trey and I when we started when he was in high school this was always a team it's like okay how can I 
how can I serve you best to get you where you want to go, you know? Um, and, you know, it's, for me, it's more about if I can just supplement the little things that he needs. Like, I'm not going to take Trey from averaging 30 and 8 to 40 and 15. It's just not realistic. But we can close the gap with little things. So, you know, there are instances where I do see something that's wrong, but I choose not to say anything. And that's, I think, something that's different from me training a guy like Trey who's talented enough who needs to figure that out on his own rather than train a sixth grader that may need me to stop and correct right then and there. And kind of speaking on that, it's, you know, you focus on the mid-range, you focus on these things he needs to get better at. And to be honest, like the mid-range is, it's a glaring, not a glaring problem, but you can look at the statistics and be like, hey, he's not comfortable here, but he's so good at the other stuff that it doesn't necessarily matter. Like even if the defense wants him to force him a certain way, like the players in the NBA are so good at what they're good at that they can kind of always get to it. Can you kind of speak on the fact of like, the best players have the stuff that they're really good at and kind of hang their hat on. Well, I've been blessed enough to be able to learn from guys that have experience, like people, that, maybe the, the casual basketball fan who's watching Trey, um, they don't realize that playoff basketball is a whole nother beast from regular season basketball. And I think Trey's starting to understand that more and more because he's starting to see more attention, he's seeing more physicality, that, that teams are 100% locked in from trying to keep him from what he wants to do. Um, but something that, that Kyrie has always preached on and Kobe's always preached on is, you know, you have to have it. And if you watch when it comes down to last second scenarios, a lot of those games are won and lost in those mid-range pull-ups. And I think for Trey, he realizes we've had the conversation is his game's never going to rely on that. It's just, it's just something that he can fall back on so they can't completely shut him out. Um, so, you know, when we're talking about adding the mid-range, you're not going to see Trey shoot six to seven mid-range shots a game at maybe one or two. Does he learn, you know, players that are that good, when you show him film of, of other players, like, hey, this is kind of what we want you to get to? Because you can say it, but I feel like for players, it holds a different weight when they see these other guys who have been all-stars for 10, 12 years get to those spots, do those things? Does he learn that way of kind of seeing, is he a visual learner where he needs to see that film of Kyrie in, Kyrie in the mid-range for him to be like, I need that? I think it's a little of both because we, we've talked about instinctually he's very good. Um, of course, any player that when you show them a guy that's been successful or, or a woman that's been successful doing things a certain way and that have won doing that, that's, that's what, what I'm trying to get through to him. And he understands that is, okay, well, Here's what Kyrie is what really makes him great. Now, and Trey mentioned it when we were, what we were talking about film, is there's a lot of things that Trey does that maybe Kyrie can take too. So, you know, and that's the hard part is what Trey's become very good about is, and is just dropping the ego. Because if you want to get where you want to go, you can always learn from someone, right? There's someone in the league that may be doing something better than you because it's such a specialist league. Um, so I, I think when he sees it on film and then we implement it to on court and then he starts feeling it and playing around with it, that's when you kind of reach your goal a little bit quicker. <clears throat> for, for kids that are watching, it's like you see, you know, these episodes and you see these, all these things that, that Trey does, whether he does it well or stuff he's working on. But for you guys, you know, you talked about like his left hand floaters used to be really bad. Now they're a little bit better. Now the big focus is kind of his mid range. Can you speak on the fact of like this is, You've worked with him since high school, so it's step by step, not you know, one summer you're trying to throw 14 different things at him to, to kind of elevate his game, but it's like slowly getting better at this and then adding this and then adding this. Yeah, um, and I, I think a big, big philosophy of mine, at least when it comes to player development is, I would rather become really, really good at one thing rather than, you now let's become above average at three different things. You know, because the more you're spending time spreading it out on, on things that he maybe needs to add, well, he's still not going to be comfortable enough for it to actually translate to the games. So we know he's a great shooter, especially from deep. We know he can get to the rim, and we know he can get fouled. So the last part of that for me was that we absolutely need is if we can add that mid-range, now they can't really sit on anything. Are there still things he can add offensively? Of course. Are there things that we need to still focus on defensively? Yes, that's a, that's a big part of what we're doing this offseason. And Trey mentioned that it's going to come down to conditioning, film study, um, a little bit of technique. But that, you know, we work on that as we get closer to the actual season. Say so you have a you know a freshman, a sophomore, point guard, 
pretty good on a good AAU team, has you know, aspirations to, to play at that next level, even try to make it to the league, and they're, they're watching this and they're watching Trey. What would you say to them as far as if that guy's like, hey, I want to be like Trey Young, the steps that they need to take? You know, you've been with him for six years to kind of get to the point where he's at. Um, I think that his game has always been about being able to pass and be able to shoot. And it's, you know, he's known for flashy moves or being able to handle it, but, you know, Trey, Trey touched on it. When he was younger, all he wanted to do was shoot. He didn't want to dribble. And then as he progressed and he got his handle and he got his vision, I think his passing opens up everything for him. And being a point guard and being able to see the court, make the right reads, it opens up everything. It opens up the fact that he can get to the rim and get to the line and pull from deep. People don't realize that his passing and his vision keeps people kind of hugged to their men. So it opens up his entire game. So I think if, if someone's wanting to be the quote unquote next Trey Young, it's just, just try to watch what he does when the ball's in his hands when he's not actually physically shooting. I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway kids can take. You know, I went, I saw him play this year in person. Um, in Orlando was Magic versus the Hawks and I came away with one, he's very smart. The way he draws fouls, the way he kind of manipulates the game. Two, his passing, even on TV, it's, it's just different than when you see it in person. Because when you see it in person, depending on where you're sitting, you can see the whole landscape of, of the game and you can see him versus the other team's point guard. And it's just night and day of him being able to make those passes with either hand at any angle, depending on what the defense is doing. Um, and just honestly, his ability to kind of, as a 6-1 point guard, control the game. Yeah. And the Hawks play at his pace and whatever he wants, he can kind of get to, which, you know, being an undersized guard is, is pretty rare. Yeah. Well, again, and Trey touched on this a little bit in film, but a lot of his is just seeing like preparation for games and seeing how they're going to guard, right? Everyone has different philosophies defensively. Um, now, a high school player, they may not have all that film access that NBA players do, but in games, you can see right away what the coverage looks like, you know, how they defend ball screens, how much they help on strong side as opposed to weak side. So it's important for not only coaches, but players, especially that are in charge of leading a team and orchestrating an offense, they have to be able to make those adjustments in games. Right, if they're going to come out and hard hedge on ball screens, it's like, okay, what can I do now to put my teammates in better spots and manipulate this coverage? Because it's, that's that's all basketball is about, and I think that's what it, being a, a good development coach or trainer is too. Is you got to see what your players doing. If they're struggling with your teaching point, how do you adjust it so that they can improve it or they can pick up on what you're trying to accomplish? Last thing I want to know is his hands. Incredible. Like even when you guys did a couple hand swipe drills, but even when that wasn't the focus, it's just every time he makes a move, it's always there, even if it's just him. Yeah. And I think for, for younger players and kind of smaller guys that are quicker, what do you want to do? If you're guarding them, you just want to jam them. Right. And that's where in high school and youth players, they get stuck or they start to you know circle around, their angles get messed up. Talk about the importance of being able to kind of fight through those, those hand checks and kind of get to the spots you want to get to. Well, when he has the ball, he's very good, and Steph's very good about they're, they're constantly moving laterally. They're not dribbling full speed laterally, but they're always kind of shifting the defense, right? So now that gives them time to, one, make a read, and two, when they do go to press up, their hands are ready and available. Like, they're not rushing the read, and I think that's what Trey's so good at. And I think that's something that him and his dad, like his, his dad played at such a high level, so he was able to, to pass on his knowledge of here's what – Here's what I went through as being a smaller guard, because you know Ray played at Texas Tech and he was putting up great numbers there. So to have that experience to lean on, not from an outsider, but from your own parent, to say, hey, here's what I did, here's what I did wrong, here's what worked for me. Um, I think, you know, Ray Rayford has been probably the biggest, um, definitely the biggest part of his development. And I think that's why Trey has gotten to a certain point. Like, you know, a lot of people say, okay, well, who, who are they training with? But it's like, who, did, who got him there? And now how do we get him from where he is to the next level? Because it doesn't matter where you are, you can always improve. But that foundation was built um, with Ray, you know, putting him through just very simplified drills and, and getting him and just talking to him about the game and watching games together. I think that's something that's, 
incredibly powerful. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know how it is. You know, if, even if you work with a high school kid or middle school kids, you're not with them five days a week. So you might be with them, if you're lucky, two days a week. And a lot of it is at home or it is what they're doing on their own. So him to have that foundation of, hey, we're gonna go to the gym and trade talked about you know shooting those high floaters and kind of, I mean, he was taught by a college point guard since he was little, that's, you can tell. Even as, you know, I'll say last thing, it's like his pace, he's so quick, but he knows when to go and he knows when to slow. So even when you're guarding him, it's not like he's just running around the court. It's like he's chilling, he's chilling. And you guys spoke on it a little bit. He almost waits till the defense reaches or the defense decides what they're going to do. And then boom, he has his counter to it. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's something that any player that is, you know, given the, given the responsibility to handle the ball and to make plays is you can't always rush what's going to happen, right? A lot of players get in trouble when they try to predetermine a read, and Trey never does that. Trey's very good about, all right, what's the defense giving me? What's the defense trying to make me do, right? Sometimes you don't just want to take what they give you because that's probably what their scout is. Let's, let's force Trey into X, Y, Z. And he's saying, okay, well, why am I getting this shot? So when he comes down the floor, it's like, okay, I have this shot. All right, I, I might take this one. Now the next time it comes out, it's just kind of like a chess match, right? And Trey's ability to kind of score from three levels um, with this floater and adding that mid-range, it, it doesn't matter what they give you in terms of like a problem, he's always going to have a solution for it. And I think that's, that's something that he's continued to progress on as he's gotten older. He's getting stronger now, so he's, he's, he's able to kind of do what he wants, but um, what he's got to he's gotten best at since probably college is he's not settling as much, right? A couple times he'll come down and he'll just take a heat check because he just feels like taking a heat check. And now he's not more so letting the defense get him in those situations. Um, and I think that's why you're seeing his efficiency go up. What's he need to do to, to reach that next level? Um, I think it comes down to this is something that we we've had conversations about is is just accountability for himself on defense and he knows that he can definitely improve defensively but it's it's hard when you have to to make every single play and situation offensively but as the hawks get older and improve they have pieces there so he doesn't have to you know necessarily make a play every time down offensively and then he can exert more energy. But I, I think he knows that he's got to be in the best shape of his life this year if they want to take that next step. Um, but I think some of that just comes with, with maturity and age. And I, I think the pieces around them were, are still trying to grow as well. Um, so in terms of the next step for Trey, I'm not sure that there's like, here's exactly what you're going to do to get you to here. But it's like, you know, let's, let's see if, if we can improve this part. Let's see where we end up. Last thing. so. You were with him in high school, you were with him in Norman, you're with him now, like what, all those different stages, like what do, you, what do you see that motivates him? When he comes in the gym, he's working out for an hour and 30 minutes at a time. Like what motivates him, in your opinion? Um, I mean, he, he wants to end up one of the best. Um, I don't, you know, for me, my biggest philosophy is, especially when I work with high level players, is if I have to be your motivator, I don't want to be your teacher. You know, I can't be both. Um, and I think that's something that he's, I've never had to do with him. I've never had to say, Trey, we got to get to the gym. Like it, a guy like this, it's like, you have to get him away from the gym. So he doesn't run his body into the ground. Um, so, you know, again, it, it's about both of us being accountable, not only to, um, each other, but to ourselves. Right. So w when we're not together, I have to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to put Trey in the best position. And then when Trey's on the court, he's got to make sure that he's going, doing everything he can so that I don't have to waste time and energy talking about things I shouldn't have to. Um, and I think that's, that's something we've learned each other's personalities as we've grown older together. We both, we both matured together. Like, you know, when I started with him, I was 25 years old and he was just 17. So, you know, we've both gone through different stages of life together. And I think that's helped our relationship on the court.